One, two, three. Hallelujah. Clap for the Lord. Amen. Praise God. All right. Let's all be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. I tell you, man, uh, when you learn things that work, you know, it's, it's almost like um, learning something. You eat something or you do something. You realize, man, this works. I felt, I felt good after eating that, right? Or, or I felt like my energy increased after I ate that. Well, you're likely to do it again. Well, I believe that when people connect success in their lives with the word and with their uh, taking in the word and applying the word, they're going to more likely do it again. And they're going to want more and more of the word. That's what happened to me. And that's why I've been going to church faithfully for all these years because I connected success with the word. Amen. And I saw a benefit, a direct benefit. Well, let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for blessing us, blessing us to be here tonight. We thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rhema from heaven. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus, that there be no distractions, but that your word would go forth and accomplish that which you've sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost now in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Church said amen. amen. Praise God. Let your name say, get your Bible out. All right. Praise the Lord. Um, it's Wednesday night, so we're always preaching on faith, and we're going to just keep on going. Amen. Keep on going because God's got somewhere he's taking us. Okay, and so I'm going to preach this message tonight entitled, The Words We Speak. The Words We Speak. And so uh, words are powerful. Amen. Words are powerful. Words carry life in them. Words also carry death in them, right? Words carry life and they carry death. And so we want to understand the power that is in words, but we want to pay attention. What is it that we're saying? I've challenged you guys over the years that you ought to uh, run a word audit on yourself. You ought to just say, let me, let me pay attention to what I'm saying because we can habitually start speaking a language that we didn't know we had adopted, amen? We can start speaking a language that we didn't know we had jumped into that and we started speaking that language and that language may not be the best, amen? And so let's go to John, John 6, 63, King James, John 6, 63. And so um, he says here, uh, John, maybe I gave him the wrong, no, 663, there it is, 663. Praise the Lord. And we want to get an understanding of what Jesus is saying. And Jesus is making it clear. He's emphasizing the power of words, but he's letting you know where his words are coming from. And so uh, he, he's, let me see. John 6.63. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And so let's just break this down. He says that it is the spirit that quicken it. So um, we emphasize this a lot in this church. You need the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You need the Holy Ghost to be alive and active in your life because it's going to be the Holy Spirit that quickens you. Have you ever been in a situation where you were thinking a way, a certain way, and it wasn't right? And then the Holy Spirit corrected you. Amen. Amen. Uh, Oh, come on, somebody. He corrected you. Have you been in a situation where you thought about doing the wrong thing and then he corrected you? Have you been in a situation where you spoke the wrong thing and then he corrected you? He quickened you. And so that word quicken means he makes you alive. He connects you right back with God. Amen. And you get right back in step and you start to do the things that you're supposed to do as a spiritual person. How many know you should not be a Christian and not be a spirit-filled Christian? Oh, uh, that's not as popular these days because Christianity has been, uh, it's become uh, seeker-friendly and they want to appeal to the senses and the, and the soul and things like that. But you're to be a spirit-filled Christian because without the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you don't even know how to be saved. You don't know how to act safe. You don't know how to walk. You don't know how to talk, any of those things. And so Jesus is putting an emphasis on the spirit. He says, 
It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And now he says the flesh profiteth nothing. And so what's important for us to understand as to what Jesus is saying is, is the flesh, the flesh profiteth nothing, but the flesh is a driver. The flesh is greedy. The flesh is an influencer. And the flesh will lead you into things that don't profit you. And so the flesh also and the soul. And so what the enemy will do is the enemy wants us to speak from our flesh and from our soul. And that's what people are actually trained to do. They didn't know they were trained. It's just the culture we're in. They're trained to speak from their flesh and their soul. <clears throat> but the spirit is where the life words are. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. The spirit is where the life words are. And so if we know that the flesh profiteth nothing, well, if the enemy is directing us, the enemy wants us to speak from our flesh and our soul, and this is profiting nothing. And this also attracts a harvest that we don't want. You know, it doesn't make any sense for people to be speaking things that they really don't want. But if you're not aware of it, you could be drawing things into yourself, into your own life that you don't even want. And it's just through the words that you speak. And so it attracts um, a harvest that we don't want. Now, words from our flesh and our soul are death inducing. Let me teach you with this tonight. Words from our flesh and our soul are death inducing, meaning they are promoting and attracting death. Now, whether that death happens right away or whether that death is death in a certain area, but that's what those words that come from the flesh and from the soul, they are death inducing. And so if I'm not careful, I could start speaking what my mind tells me to speak. Come on, somebody. I could start speaking what my flesh wants to speak. My flesh wants to express, right? So what do we do? We make mistakes in this world like saying, well, you know, I'm just telling you how I feel. How I many know how you feel is not important. How you feel is going to hurt you more than it's going to hurt me. And so when people say I had to let them know how I feel, they didn't hurt me. Come on. I had to give them a piece of my mind. You didn't give me a piece of your mind. Amen. You gave the devil access to your mind. You gave the devil access to your mind and then now you started to prophesy when you start releasing words from your soul and then now your flesh. And then guess what? It feels good to say something like that for a second. See, when you say something like that, you get it off your chest. It feels good for a second, but it don't take long for you to start feeling the weight of that decision that you made to engage in the wrong arena. We're not cut out to engage in the flesh and the soul. That's why it's a, it's a waste of time to be trying to battle your mind and battle all this stuff and battle people and all that. It's spiritual, everything is spiritual and all of our power is in the spirit. And so once again, that's where the enemy, he's trying to get you to speak from the place that profits you nothing. He don't want you to do like Jesus. And Jesus says, the words that I speak, they are spirit and life. So what does this mean? They are coming from the spirit of God. Man, what if you just stepped into that revelation where you say, everything I speak is coming from the spirit of God. And then you're going to have people like, you're just too rigid. I don't care what you think. Everything I speak is coming. Now think about it. If you had the opportunity, we know Proverbs 18, 20, 21, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall it be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And so if you understand that, that death and life are in the power of the tongue, what you want to speak? You want to speak death or you want to speak life? It's in the power of your tongue. It's not in the power of somebody else, what somebody else says. You know, it doesn't matter what anyone says about word of life. Y'all in here with me. 
It doesn't matter what anyone says about word of life and, oh, well, you know, word of life can't do this, they can't do that. Well, we don't care what anybody says because all that matters is what we say. And as long as what we say is lining up with what God said. And that's all that matters. And so when Jesus is demonstrating this, he says, the words that I speak, they are spirit and life. They are coming from the spirit of God and they are effective in the spirit realm. See, you not only have to know that there is a spirit realm, but you need to know how to engage in that realm. Amen. Because as long as you live on planet Earth and you are saved, you will have attacks coming at you. The enemy will try his best to steal, kill and destroy. But if I understand, I'm not going to waste my time with soulish words and fleshly words that are going to profit me nothing. What am I going to do? I'm going to do like Jesus. The words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. So they're coming from the Holy Spirit and they are effective in the spirit realm. And also they are life producing. They are life producing. And now let me tell you something about the kingdom of God. Maybe some people don't know this, but there are no meaningless words in the kingdom of God. There are no meaningless, meaningless words. There is no, oh, I didn't really mean that. No, in the kingdom, everything you say counts. So you can't say, oh, I didn't mean that. That doesn't exist in the kingdom. In the kingdom, it's, your words already have a meaning. And so you start to understand, now, I'm going to release kingdom words that mean something. They come from the Holy Ghost and they are effective in the spirit realm and they are life producing. And so what that means is they're going to give me a harvest. And, and so one of the toughest things for a Christian to do is to convert his or her words. That's hard. It took me a long time. But I had to be intentional in my pursuit of this. Now, when I say convert, now, this is where, you know, I don't know, man. I just want, sometimes I'll be wondering, man, do people really want to win? You know what I'm saying? Or do Christians just want to go through life saying, yeah, I'm a Christian, but you lose it. You're getting whooped on every day. What, what good is that? What kind of, if I wasn't saved, you wouldn't get me saved. Oh, come on, somebody. If I wasn't saved, I would, you wouldn't get me saved. I wouldn't get saved by no broke down person. Uh, that would not affect me, amen? I'd say, go on, want to, to, want to go to church with me? Nope. No, thank you, I'll pass. That is not attractive. Defeated. How many defeated people do we have that are saying they're Christians, but they're defeated? They got no power. That is not winning anyone in. But the reason that people are like that is they're not applying biblical principles. And so I had to be intentional when I learned these things that I teach you. I believed it was true. When I learned that death and life are in the power of the tongue, I believed it. I literally believed it. And so what I had to do is I had to take it in enough to where now my, um, I was able to convert my words. And so I had to take my words out of the world system and put them into the kingdom. And so I was able to convert my words. And so now this is, have you guys ever experienced this with people I, I experience this all the time. I, I, people say stuff that they wouldn't say here. They wouldn't say in front of me, but they say it habitually. Yeah. They say, they still, people still today still say, and they didn't heard me say it um, uh, probably a million times, and they still say, I'm sick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sick. Yeah. Man, I've been saying don't say that for years. And people still say, I'm just I'm sick, I ain't, I ain't feeling good today, man. I'm just feeling terrible. Really? Well, what if I was just cold hearted and I said, well, you ain't getting no better? People say, what? What you say, Pastor? Oh, you say, you sick, you ain't getting no better. Ooh, you, you right, you looking pretty bad. 
But there has to be something that wakes us up. It's almost like somebody need to crash a gong or a cymbal or something and say, hey, man, every time you speak like that, you're speaking against your own well-being. Oh, see, Pastor, that sounds like legalism. That sounds like, see, that's the problem. You've been listening to the wrong people. The wrong people will have you thinking that spiritual things. Do you know how many people thought Jesus was over the top? They thought he was crazy. They said, he, oh, no, nah, it doesn't. Come on. And that's what they should be saying about you. If you got a lot of people that just are, uh, are fine with you and, and, and you're not making them uncomfortable ever, <laughs> you're probably talking just like them. But you ought to be one that is changing others' behavior at least while they're around you. Right. Amen? At least while they're around you. And so, once again, one of the toughest things is for a Christian to convert his or her words. Now, the reason is we've been trained and programmed to speak from a lower system. We've been trained and programmed to speak from a lower system. And in this lower system, this is where the soul and the flesh dominate. Think about everything that's going on in our world. Just think about your day to day life. Think about commercials. Think about how much stuff do you see that is geared towards feeding your spirit? If you go throughout your day, how many things do you see even um, unexpectedly or, you know, just stuff that you say, oh, wow, that's nice. That was, they put that there to feed my spirit. Never. But how much do you see that is to plant seeds in your soul? How much do you see and hear that is in, intended to impact your flesh? It's all over. Why? Because this is a lower system. And in order for the enemy to win, he has to have you operating according to the rules of this lower system. If you ever learn to convert your words, then your words will go up above this lower system. And then now there is a higher, more powerful, more effective way of communicating that will bring change into your life. A lot of people can't get changed because they can't convert their words. So when I pass, I've been praying. I've been praying. You've been praying, but what you've been saying? Huh? See, a lot of times people don't pay it. They say, I've been praying. You've been praying, that's good, but what you've been saying? At some point, what you're praying is going to have to line up with what you're saying. You can't be praying and saying something different and expecting change. Change is spoken into existence. Change that is change here is not uh, really change in the kingdom. And so in the kingdom, so we learn uh, Romans 4, 17, we speak those things that are not as if they were. And so what does that mean? When I start to convert my words, I start, I'm not pulling something out of thin air. I'm pulling it from one kingdom to another. Oh, come on, somebody. You can be in the kingdom of God, a citizen of the kingdom of God, but you still have to live on planet Earth. So what you have to learn how to do is pull kingdom realities into your natural realm so you can have a better earthly experience. See, when you start to experience things like this, you're not just going to be waiting for the rapture. I mean, are you supposed to be living so good that the rapture shows up and you weren't looking for it? Because the people that are looking for the rapture are the ones that's going to miss it because they're not busy about their father's business. Amen. Amen. But so when I start to understand this, I, I've got to convert my words. I have to completely abandon this lower system when it comes to my speech. And so once again, we've been trained and programmed to speak from a lower system where the soul and the flesh dominate. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, 33. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. King James first. And so he says, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. 
And what he's saying in this text before this, you know, they're saying stuff as though, well, if any of this wasn't real, then all this is in vain. But then they start speaking, you know, just stuff. We may as well eat and drink because we're going to die tomorrow. And they, they're speaking stuff they really don't mean. But Paul is bringing correction to them. And he says, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. And so this is this communication. Uh, see, uh, this is why, like, let me just I, I try to give these practical things. You have to pay attention. And so if something and you know whether it's feeding your soul or your spirit by the way you, you know, feel after. So let's say you watch something. You watch some news and they give you some stuff. Then just assess, just step back and assess. Okay, so what's going on? How you feel? You probably don't feel full of faith, optimistic, hopeful about your future. You step back and you step back in there and you listen again. Well, did, oh, it's five o'clock. Let me get the five o'clock news. Get on there. Step back. Assess yourself. Well, it's just information, Pastor. No, it's not. It is targeted weapons shot at your soul to keep you down and it is intended to lead you away. Think about it. How fast people get led away from their faith in God. People could come out of church on Sunday and be full of faith and be optimistic. Man, we can take over the world, especially this past Sunday. We had such a powerful time. All these words of faith spoken up in here and all this type of stuff. Well, you know, you could leave here and go watch something. And all of your optimism starts to go away. And then people make the mistake of, see, you got to pay attention to your spirit, which is connected to God's spirit, and he's going to give you these reminders. And so, I didn't feel that good after watching that. Let me repent. I shouldn't have watched that. I shouldn't have let that in. Because that's pulling me in the wrong direction. I shouldn't have, oh, see, some of y'all, if you get serious about this, you'll, you'll stop talking to certain people. Oh, come on. Y'all don't want me. Sometimes people don't know how serious I am with this. I ain't playing. I, I'll cut people off. I'm not going to talk to you, man. Why? Because you're not speaking life. And you're trying to pull me down, apparently. Oh, no, I have no intention of doing that. You don't have those intentions, but the devil that is using you has those intentions. Now, if I'm serious about my victory, I'm going to pay attention to my surroundings. If you're serious about driving on the road and being safe, you're going to pay attention to your surroundings. How many know it's not just good enough for you to know how to put on your brakes? You got to look out for people who don't know how to put on their brakes. It's not just you stand on the road. It's watching out for people out there. Well, so then you have to be aware of how things work. And so be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. So with this, take note. Be mindful of who you're talking to. Who are you talking to at work? Who are you talking? What family member are you talking to? Who are you speaking with? Who are you engaging with? There's an influence that is happening. And you have to be mindful of that. Sometimes people say, oh, it's just small talk. It's just not. Everything is intentional. There's a purpose behind everything. So be aware of it. And then let's look at this in Amplified Classic. So it says, do not, be do not be so deceived and misled. Evil companionships. Amen? Evil companionships. Oh, you got, you got, uh, there's different loyalties. People have different levels of loyalty. I want to tell you, you need to learn how to uh, uh, graduate to spiritual loyalty. And so what does that mean? Uh, they might be related to you, but they're not worthy of your spiritual loyalty. And so, because if you're not careful, people that are related to you can pull you away from spiritual power. They can pull you right away 
from spiritual power, and then what are they going to do? They're going to talk that talk. They're going to talk that lower system talk. But you have to be mindful. Say, oh, no. I have to grow in the spirit. I have to grow. And so <clears throat> I'm not going to have all these companionships. And then people have these loyalties. Well, you know, that's my friend, though. I mean, you know, but that friend. Yeah, but see, it seems like every time you hang out with that friend, you come, a, come away with some pessimism. It seems like every time you talk to that person, you come up out of there and your faith is gone. And, and next, no, you need to pay attention to that. Hey, man, I, I can't be hanging out with these people. See, that's that companionships, communion, associations. You see that? A lot of people, they got a lot of, uh, you know, we used to just be able to say, hey, don't have a bunch of heathen friends. But it's beyond that. I'm going to give you a warning as, as a pastor of this church. Watch out for faithless friends. Watch out for faithless family members. Watch out for faithless other Christians. They say they're Christians and they say it with their words, but their actions are showing you something else and their words are definitely showing you something else. Watch out for those people. Because evil communications. See, I can wear a Christian t-shirt and still have evil intent and not even know it. This is what's so cold about this. There's a lot of People who are really not trying to harm anyone, but they're just being duped because their spiritual awareness is gone. So don't nobody care if you meant to do well, but the devil used you to do wrong. Amen. And so if I understand, I, I got to protect this because this is too valuable and I'm not going to waste it. And so. Don't be so deceived and misled. Evil companionships, communion, associations, corrupt and deprave good manners and morals and character. Oh, man. Have you, you don't have to. Has anybody seen somebody, man, that was on fire for God? They mess around and fell into the wrong church. Oh, come on. Some, ah, come on, somebody. It was on fire for God and mess around and fell into the wrong church that was designed to appeal to the soul, and now all of a sudden, they're not walking in the level of power they used to walk in. Come on, they don't speak the same thing. They don't talk about, matter of fact, they don't even have ears to hear victorious preaching. There's a lot of people that'll listen to stuff I say, and they, they can't tune in. They say, uh, mm -hmm. Because they have gotten around the wrong people and their manners and morals. See, those Christian morals, you're supposed to be attracted to spiritual things. You're supposed to be attracted to laying hands on the sick. You're supposed to be attracted to speaking those things that are not as if they were. You're supposed to be attracted to power. But now you mess around and get around the wrong people. I mean, oh, just because it's a church don't mean it's the church of the living God. Amen. Because the church of the living God is never going to take you away from spiritual things. Amen. He's going to push you towards it. That's why I'm always warning people. And people say, oh, well, you know, I don't believe in all that tongues and all that stuff. Well, you better pray, pray on it. You better go to God about that. Oh, no, well, see, I don't believe you. You better, go, you better go to the word and give me another scripture and don't just be stuck on 1 Corinthians 14. You better give me another one that gives you permission to disobey the book. If they did it in the book of Acts, the book of Acts was our example. Jesus told them even before then, don't you go nowhere until you're being due with power from on high. You got people today, they mock tongues. And that is a dangerous thing to do. And you got all these churches. And you got all these weak Christians. I never met a Christian full of power that was against tongues. Never met them once. 
Every one of them that I met that's against tongues, they got no power. Can't even get over a headache. I'm telling you, man. But if you understand greater is he, come on, like I preached on Sunday, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Well, that he in you is Jesus, but he's in you by the Holy Ghost. And so you start to understand, I got power. And if they needed to have this kind of power in the book of Acts, and I need this power today. But if I keep listening to these people that are trying to appeal to my flesh and my soul, then guess what? My spirit man's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. There used to be a time where you used to walk and used to speak and decree, but now you don't say nothing. Now you're just like, well... But we just see what happens. You wasn't seeing what was happening when you was full of the Holy Ghost, when you was full of the Spirit. You are speaking those things that are not as if they were. It's going to be because I said so. See, that's power. But when people get in these weak establishments, their power goes away. And that is a very dangerous place to be because if not for the power of the Holy Spirit, we can't make it. And now, you got to understand this, and I want you to pay attention. What, what am I listening to? Who, who am I talking to? Who am I around? Pay attention to all of that stuff. Because there is a language of victory, and there is a language of defeat. These two languages are flowing every day. There is a language of victory, and there is a language of defeat. Now, the one you entertain the most, y'all got to understand how we, how we as people are made. The one you entertain the most, that's the one that's going to influence what comes out of your mouth. So if I'm entertaining the language of defeat, so what does that mean? I'm, list, I'm, I'm tolerating it. See, I'm... I have to pray because I, I, I have to have a balance because for me, uh, and I'm not trying to make excuses for myself, but like the way God made me is I don't have a gray. I just got a black and a white. And so I, sometimes that can get me in trouble because I got very little tolerance for faithless speech. I got very little tolerance for people who are just magnifying everything wrong and not magnifying what God has done. So I don't have a lot of patience in that area. And so for me, it's I'm, I'm with God. And if you with God, you're not going to act like me. You're going to act like God wants you to act. And so I'll call some things out. Just to, but see now, we can make up every reason to fail. And you could tell somebody you could win. I know winning is in you. Because I know Jesus is in you. And they'll say, yeah, but because they have been entertaining the wrong language. There is a language of victory and a language of defeat. That language of defeat is going to be playing on all those commercials that come on when you're watching your shows. That language of defeat. How many more commercials do we need to see about even depression? They're trying to make everybody's depressed now. And if you say something about you don't have to be depressed, people are offended and you're labeled a insensitive person. But you know what? That depression is what leads people to suicide. And they felt a certain way and they didn't understand. But what if we started to understand that there's a language of victory and a language of defeat? How about we start speaking the language of victory? And how about we have testimonies of people saying, I used to be depressed. I almost committed suicide. But then God came and touched my life and I caught a revelation of power. I caught a revelation of his word. He gave me an image of, this, of the me that he sees. And I realized that I'm more than a conqueror. I realize that I'm valuable. I realize that my life matters. 
They don't want you saying no stuff like that. They want you taking pill after pill after pill, which only numbs you. And what happens? That's why you got to get a refill. Because you haven't been cured, you've been numbed. And when the numbing wears off, you got to get a refill. But how many know God can heal you at the core? God can touch you at the source. God can heal you in your inner How many know that that depression is coming from your soul, which is your mind, will, and your emotions, but then when God touches your spirit, your spirit comes alive. Your spirit is quickened. Your spirit is active. Your spirit is energized. And all of a sudden, your spirit is dominating your soul. And so you walk in victory even though everybody in your bloodline was defeated. It won't matter to you because you've been quickened. See? Now, I could only get to this place in my life because I made a conscious decision to convert my words. I don't let myself get away with loose words. Now, if you're one that has a problem with them loose words, you need to pay attention because it's going to be something that is going to affect you. It is going to affect you more than others. Amen? Uh, what is that, Matthew 12, 27? Maybe if you put that up there real quick. Matthew 12, 37, I think it is. 37. Matthew 12, 37. So this is going to be your word. So I want you to, the reason I preach like this, you're here or you're watching me or whatever, this is so you know what's going on. It ain't going to be by nobody else's words. You can leave it up in the Amplified Classic. For by your words, whose words is that? Man, for by your words, you will be justified. See, it's not going to be because, listen, Nobody can, you don't even care about what people say about you. That shouldn't even matter. Just like anybody watching me or, they, I've had so many people complain it, but you know what? It doesn't affect me because no one on planet earth has power over me. And nobody's words can affect me but my own. And that's the same for you. For by your words, you will be justified and acquitted and by your words, you will be condemned and sentenced. See that? And so it's going to be by your words. Your, can, you, can you see if, you, if they have that in the message translation? I'm just giving you all some bonus stuff. Uh, yeah, look at that, man. You see that? Words can be your salvation. Words can also be your damnation. And what's this lower system trying to do? Keep you ignorant of the power of your words. And so once again, there's a language of victory, a language of defeat. The one you entertain the most. I'm telling you, man, you ought to get right. I used to do stuff like this. When I was in the insurance business, I had my office and people come in talking that talk. I find I get up out of that conversation. I find a way to, excuse me, I think, hold on, I'll be right back. <laughs> because you got to get out of there, man. The people dumping on you, man, you, you can't let that, you got to get out of there. You need to take a Bible break or something. You need to just get out of there, man, and even go outside and just say Jesus or something. You got to change the atmosphere. Because it's those words that are carrying this power. Now, um, Jesus didn't waste his words. Amen? Now he said, starting out this, this message, that the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Well, Jesus didn't waste his words. He always meant what he said. Now you want to you wanna do something like to where you can um, graduate in your walk with God? You guys say, yeah, you want to you go up? Well, you want to get to where you always mean what you say. Now, this, let me give you a warning on this. Sometimes the Holy Spirit may have you say something, but then your soul will say, dang, that was a little harsh. Ah, oh, 
I don't know if I should have said that. And then the Holy, the Holy Ghost will say, what's all the contemplation? <laughs> you said what I told you to say. What's all this contemplation? Well, I started to learn. I had to learn that as a pastor. Can you guys imagine how many times I've come home from preaching and second, I said, oh, Lord, I don't know. And you guys been around me long enough. I didn't say some like, just some, I'm talking about some knife throwing stuff. But then every time I try to go home and rethink it, the Holy Ghost chastised me. So what are you doing? Well, I, well, I think I should have, because when I get just to my regular self, then now, you know, we're just people and we're kind and we, you know, you start thinking, God ain't looking for that. He's looking for obedience. When you're representing him in the earth, he wants obedience. And you say what he tells you to say. And don't back off of it. And so Jesus meant what he said. We don't see the examples of Jesus always apologizing for what he said. I had to learn this as a parent too, right? Because you bring correction to your kids and you know you you chastise them, you you correct them. But I never went back to my kids and say, you know, I'm sorry for giving you that whooping. Because if I'm sorry for giving them the whooping, I should have never gave them the whooping. I would go talk to my kids and say, now you know why you got that, right? You, you, know, what, you know why this happened. And I, I wanted to make sure they had an understanding. But if you allow the devil to bully you to now you're all of a sudden questioning everything you say and you're uh, double, you know, you met those people that are like double-minded or one way, you know, they speak one way and then they change and then they flip flopping and all that stuff. Not good. Unstable man. And so we don't want that. And so Jesus, as our example, what did he do? Jesus meant what he said. Never said anything that he didn't mean. And then people today say, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Well, you need to lock in the God where you only say what he tells you to say. Now, this will take some training. It took a lot of training and dedication on my part for me just to learn this as a person. So what helped me, y'all know what helped me? Is I learned to be quiet. So that was a, a, a practice that God had me implement. Because I wasn't trained up enough to speak the good stuff only. And so he showed me how to be quiet. So I won't say nothing. And then he told me how to wait. And so now he's blessed me with uh, an abundance of patience. And so I used to be a person that was very quick tempered and short fuse, but now God's blessed me with an abundance of patience. I've, I've sat down and um, I've sat down in counseling meetings and I just listen to people and they just going on and on. I just got patience because he has trained me so that when I do speak, I am not retracting those words. Now, if you're a person that is constantly retracting your words, you need to go back in and pray and, Lord, help me to exercise this thing. The pastor was talking about, help me to just be quiet. Then that way, when I do speak, I don't want to speak and then regret what I said. And then so the more you do that, then you'll learn how to speak actually from your spirit and not from your soul. Amen. All right. So Jesus didn't waste his words. He always meant what he said. And his words always, look at your name and say always. always. His words always produce. You, you guys get this? Do you know that Jesus' words always produced? None of the words that he spoke were ever fruitless. They always produced. So go to Psalm, Psalm 107.20. Psalm 107.20.
Praise the Lord. Okay, so he sent his word. So what does this mean? He sent it, right? And we know in um, Matthew, I think it's Matthew 8, um, one of them, Mark 8 and Matthew 8, but where, um, you know, the centurion said, you don't have to come to my house to send the word. Well, we see in Psalm 107, 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. And so this is so powerful. Why is this powerful? Because these words that are spirit words that come from God, come from the Holy Ghost, they are effective, once again, in the spirit realm. And so when you start looking at the spirit realm, then now things like time and space and all that don't matter. And so that means I can send a word from right here preaching in Marietta, California and send a word to India, come on somebody, and have that word producing and having that desired effect. I could send a word to Ohio and have that word working for my son and his family. Like I do stuff like this. But then you start to understand like, oh, thank you, Lord. You mean I don't have to buy no airplane ticket to get that word over there? Nope. Going to save your money and just send the word. You could send the word to hospitals. Come on. That you didn't get a chance to go to actually pray for somebody, but you sent the word up in there. See, this is the kind of power that we need to be made aware of. Now, if we take our words lightly, we'll never see them as this powerful. And so we'll still speak. You know, I had to learn this, man. I mean, you know, it's easy, like, especially now when you've been working a lot or you're doing a lot, it's easy to say, I'm tired. You got, come on, y'all be on. But what is tired producing? More tired. More tired. Then next thing you know, you're still tired. But what if you change it because your words have been converted? Come on, you converted your words from this lower system and you took your words up to the higher system and you started to speak what you wanted and not what you felt. So what if you were tired, but you woke up and you said, I'm full of energy. I'm energetic, man. I feel like, woo, I could run a marathon right now. <laughs> now the world will say, well, you're just lying. No, I'm just speaking spirit words and spirit words produce. Now don't keep saying the marathon thing unless you really want to run one because you keep speaking that, you're going to be in a marathon <laughs> because your words are create what you say. Okay, so we have, um, if we understand that Jesus is in us, so his words were always spirit and life um, and they always produce, but because we are in him, how many of y'all believe you're in him? You're in Jesus, right? He's in you. Because we're in him, then our words should always, I don't mean just when you're at church, they should always be spirit and life. Oh, I'm telling you, I think this is one of the major problems that we face in a church is people having multiple personalities. Multiple personality disorder. I'm not talking about your, you know, psychic, you know, like psychiatric help needed and all that. I'm talking about you act one way at this place, a different, you know, all these different people manifesting. You're at your house and you're manifesting, but over here at the church, you just say, oh man, you're just so sweet. But then at the house, you're like, who is that? Right? But we ought not be like that because was Jesus like that? Jesus was the same, no matter where he was. So I don't think you should ever be comfortable enough to manifest. Because manifesting in a negative way shouldn't be a part of who you are. So I think that we should be the same all the time. Amen? Now that takes training, but what does that do? I got to commit to it. I got to allow the Holy Spirit to show me how to 
come on, you're going to have to get into sometimes some warfare, even with yourself. You got to put yourself in check. Amen. Most people do that when they got to get up in the morning. They got to go to work. Their, their flesh is like, no, not today. But you're like, man, we got to go. I don't have time to lay here. And so you can put yourself in check. And so now, if we understand that because Jesus is in us and his words carried such power and his words were so effective, then we ought to understand so can ours. Ours can be that way too. And so we have power to change any situation for the better with our words. We have power to change any situation for the better with our words. <clears throat> Go to Proverbs 25, 11. Amplify classic on this one. There we go. So it says, a word fitly spoken and in due season is like apples of gold in settings of silver. And so that's just beautiful, right? You think about that. So it's like a word fitly spoken. So <clears throat> it's the right word at the right time. The right word at the right time. Okay. The right word at the right time. Okay, now go to Isaiah 50 and we'll look at verses 4 and 5. Okay, so the Lord hath given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He, make, he waketh morning by morning. He waketh my ear to hear as a learned. Now think about this. God has equipped you to speak a word at the right time to someone. Have any of you ever done that where you actually met a person and you spoke something and what you said was exactly what they needed to hear at that moment. And you didn't even know what they were going through, but God used you. And that's what he says. God has given me the tongue of the learned so that I could speak a word, a right word in the right season. And that word that is released from you will bring life to someone else. And he wakes us up and he has given us the ability to hear as the learn. So we're not strangers to God's voice. And so our words can bring good to us, but also our words can bring good to others. Now go to Proverbs 15, 23, King James. We're going to close in a minute here. A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth. See that? A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth. What do people say? I'm just not feeling the best today. Well, speak something else. You want joy. You need to say the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah. And so now a man hath joy by the answer of his mouth and a word spoken in due season. How good it is. It's timely. And see, there's a, a, a flow that comes with God. And if you submit yourself and you go ahead and convert your words and you'll go ahead and you'll be walking in step with God and God will tell you what to say and you say it at the right time. And to you, it may not have meant that much, but to that person, it was a life raft. It was a lifesaver. And they took that word and you don't even know that they grabbed onto the word that you spoke and it caused them to rise above. Amen. And so now when we start to understand this, what if I'm even hearing myself say positive things about my own situation? Then now a man have joy by the answer of his mouth. So you can't speak things like, man, I'm tired of this job. I just don't like this job. Well, you know what? You're going to attract more of what you don't like. But when you start speaking stuff, a man hath joy by the answer of his mouth. You can actually be prophesying your way to work. Oh, come on. 
You could be on your way to work talking about, man, this is going to be a great day. I'm up in there, man. Everybody there loves me. I, I got supernatural increase on me. It seems like everything I touch is just working. I know how to do everything. Come on, somebody. The blessing of the Lord is on my life. Now you step in and what are you going to have? Just more joy. But if you start talking about, man, today going to be tough. I am not looking forward to it then now you're going to walk into what you said. And so now we want to be able to connect this as we close. We want to connect what we truly believe. That's another deception of the enemy. He's trained you to say stuff that you really don't want to happen. Like we say, wishing somebody success. You say, oh, go break a leg. Well, nobody, nobody really wants somebody to like break a leg. But you just say it because it's just like, you know, that's just what we say. Well, you know, they also say, hey, well, go give them what? H-E-L-L? You don't really want (laughs) nobody bringing that. But it's just things that people say, cliches, words that we are tricked into thinking don't matter. But they are Words that do have an effect. Well, we need to convert our words completely to where now we only say what we believe. Amen? You know it's good if you can be an honest person. Like if you're one of those people, and hopefully you're not, but uh, flattery is a dangerous thing. There are people that flatter others, and so they just are full of compliments, and they're just, oh, man, that you know, man, that's such a nice outfit, and that's a this and that. And then in your mind, you're like, man, this ain't the first day I wore this. You've seen this already. But people are so full of compliments. You know, you're the greatest, and you're the, well, you know what? A lot of that is some lying going on. Let me just go ahead and be the one to say it. A lot of that is some lying going on. Well, you don't want to be comfortable lying. Now, you don't want to be hurting people's feelings either. You don't want to be saying, you know, man, that shirt, I'm just telling you, that shirt is no good. That it don't fit right. It, and you didn't iron it at all. You got wrinkles everywhere. Now, you don't want to hurt people's feelings. And some people say, well, Pastor, but I was honest. I had to tell them, man. I, I was honest. I had to tell them, those shoes are busted. Well... <laughs> You know, there's a balance. You know, you know, that's where you can ask God to show you how to be quiet and help you work on that part of it. But you want to be to where you say what you believe. And so now let's close with this scripture, 2 Corinthians 4.13. It's a popular scripture. We've looked at it, man, thousands of times probably. We have in the same spirit of faith. And so you have that. You have that in you. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you have everything you need today. You already have it. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. Why did I say it? Well, because you believed it. And then even people that say things that they later try to say they didn't mean it or whatever, they really said what they believed. I've taught you guys for years that first words come from your heart. And your heart is the center. That's where you really believe. It's going to come out of your heart. Second words, that's cleanup words, they come from your mind. And so you know you shouldn't have said that. And so, but the thing is, is the first words are traveling too fast for the second words to catch up. So you got to learn to convert your first words so that the first thing that comes out of your mouth, it'll be spirit and it'll be life. And so, We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. What do we say? What do we talk about? Only what we believe. If we don't believe it, we don't say it. Now, everything you believe, it'd be nice if it was good, but sometimes it's not. And so you want to convert that thing. You want to get yourself locked into the kingdom to where only kingdom is coming out of your mouth because kingdom is all you believe. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Y'all believe God's going to start to use you.
not to just speak life over yourself, but how about speaking life into someone else? I think we're in those times where you could speak life into someone else and they can be quickened by your words and your words can hover over them and cause them to continue even when they wanted to quit. Amen. Go ahead and clap for the Lord tonight. Amen. Praise God. Let's close in prayer. <clears throat> Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for tonight. We thank you for giving us the power to speak. We thank you that we can speak what we believe. And we thank you that our hearts have been converted. And we trust you, Lord. Maybe you're watching this right now, no matter what time it is. God sees you there and he loves you and he has a great plan of victory for you. But you must open up your heart and let him in. Church, let's repeat this prayer so that anyone who hears this message will know how to receive Jesus as Lord. Repeat after me. Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. I commit my life into your hands. This day I am saved. Do with me as you please and fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap for the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen.